Yo, what's going on, guys? It's boy Uzi. And of course, we're back again once again with another Power Rangers issue review. This is Mighty Morphin number six. Things are a little different, obviously. I'm going to be looking at you guys the entire time while I review this because I'm obviously experimenting and trying new formats and ways to get these reviews out to you a lot quicker so that way more content can come a lot faster of course power rangers as you can tell by my nice background that um is an obvious love of mine and i'm really i really am taking this whole content thing seriously as far as pumping up more power rangers in addition to what you guys already might know me for don't worry it's not going anywhere here is my thoughts and review on mighty morphin number six So basically what I'm trying out here is I'm going to divide it up into a few categories. What entirely was the purpose of the issue? What was the conflict, if any? Things that we can pull from the issue, like some takeaways or things that we learned. Any sort of rev resolutions and any and all predictions that I might have. So as far as the purpose of the issue, as you might already have known, if you're following from the last review or if you already read Power Rangers or excuse me, Mighty Morphin number five i get those confused a lot because this is a two intertwining stories happening at the same time one on earth other in space with the omega rangers and draken and the power rangers are literally working hand in hand with the military i don't really ever remember that happening in any previous iteration of a power rangers series at all and i'm talking the tv show including the comic books and i thought it was a very unique and different dynamic when i saw it on the pages i was like this is actually kind of crazy like i've never i, I never would have imagined seeing power rangers with military kind of forces which kind of makes me wonder if any other sorts of unique crossovers would actually happen like i don't know with the likes of gi joe i don't know nothing about gi joe so don't ask me anything aside, <laughs> alongside those lines because that's something i'm actually looking into on the side myself so like i said the power rangers are working with the military to get this dome barrier energy field that lord zed from the inside caused from like i said the last previous issues they cannot budget they cannot get through it and the perimeter is being surrounded by these new super putties so that is the whole purpose they're trying to get in so they can save everyone that's on the inside which would include the new green ranger matt and any of the civilians that are obviously left the angel grove is essentially in a dome shout out to rpm the conflict this episode introduces is obviously not just having to break the barrier down, but they have to figure out a way to get in and dismantle it before the military actually comes in and nukes the thing. Yes, we are actually being threatened by the military in a very government way that, well, if you can't figure it out, we're just going to blow the thing up. Very authentic, very real, and I feel like that is pretty much the norm and the storytelling in a lot of other things. When they don't know how to destroy something, when they know how to break something, what does the government love to do? Blow it up. So from this issue, what were some things that we can pull from it? Well, we could take away some things that I definitely wanted to pick, take note of. We obviously learned the government's motives. We do see some backstory and some kind of character development with a lot of the Rangers, more or less with Aisha, with Rocky, with Adam. And then there's some inner conflict between the relationship going on between Kimberly and Tommy, but there's some things that I do want to talk about there will actually lead into my predictions. And some of my favorite parts out of this issue actually has everything to do with Eltar because we do have a flashback scene, much like in the other previous issues. I do like how they open up with seeing what happened 10,000 years ago with the Eltarians. Learning more about the Guardians of Eltar. Now that we know that Candace, which was Skull's girlfriend, her name is actually Zelia. Learn a little bit more through Zelia. And the conversation with Zordon that she has in the issue. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a sucker for lore that's added on to make the universe of Power Rangers that much bigger because I just think that learning new things that has we've never seen from the TV show, it's what makes the overall story that much better. Talk about a little bit more about that within my predictions as well. And then that Zardis, another one of Zordon's companions and partners from way back in the day, is actually still alive as far as the resolutions out of this issue i will have to say that there i guess you could say that there was they didn't manage to get inside the barrier and how they were able to do that was grace on the inside because that's where her base is from you know how she was able to help out matt 
being, you know, the new Green Ranger and all, with her team of people and scientists and whatnot, they're inside and she was somehow able to send a signal out that Alpha and Billy were able to retrieve. Billy was then able to like transcribe some of it and it was a video message. So he was able to kind of piece together whatever kind of information, data, you know how data works. It's a bunch of zeros and ones. I don't know how he did it, but if it's anything that utilizes any kind of extra brain power, you know our man Billy is got you covered. He was able to kind of transcribe it and essentially, I guess it was a little forewarning that they were gonna try to make some kind of disturbance so that they could go in for a very, very short amount of time. So of course the Rangers had to then show up to the dome and you know, obviously there was a fight that happened once they arrived, but surely enough, they were actually to make their way inside so they can then proceed with their next part of the plan, which of course is to figure out what the hell is going on, how to break it and to save everyone while they're in there. Funny enough, within this resolution comes more conflict, but I guess we can go back to that really quick. How this issue ends is actually something that I wasn't necessarily expecting, and that's that they were approached by none other than Goldar, an army of putties and soldiers, and Matt, the green evil ranger now this is gonna kind of transition into my prediction so i guess we could kind of just start with this my first prediction is that this matt or evil green ranger is not actually evil i really do think that there was something that went on inside that we'll probably learn about in the next issue that will probably be some kind of a backstory flashback moment that'll lead into the events that's happening currently right now. It does seem like Matt is putting on some kind of a front in front of Goldar and the putties because it's funny how the Green Ranger always is rooted. Its roots are always within evil. That's how it started and it's how it's seemingly still going on. I'm not gonna lie, I do think that that's, that that's a nice nod that they do pay the Green Ranger that much respect in that if you're gonna have that mantle passed on, that torch, that flame passed on to a new person that's donning the, the Dragon Zord coin, it's almost as if like you have to go through all those trials and tribulations. Just like Tommy, Matt's gonna have to go through this evil phase, but I don't really think, like I said, he's actually evil. And if he somehow is, I know that Lord Zed and his re-energized power coin are basically linked. They are they are coming from this the same kind of chaos energy and that's how zed has his new design and you know he's got those little tubes and it's so it's so crazy how just a little bit of detail can go a long way with making a character look that much more godlike and who's to say that he wasn't able to maybe manipulate matt in some way if he actually is to be going through this evil phase or if matt is faking it and making it seem like he's aligned himself with the enemies so that way he can then actually help the rangers in the long run now another prediction that i do have actually goes back into one of the key points that happened within this issue and it was a dialogue between tommy and kimberly now they were having um a conversation about just you know kind of figuring out like maybe things to do tommy has always been about like figuring out what the best option is as the team leader of course naturally he has everyone's best interest and so through this conversation we actually do quickly i do want to point out there are a couple, more than just one thing that i really did like about this issue but just the mere acknowledgement and uh the fact that they brought up uh tor and the aquatar rangers I, I i love the little nuances that they bring about so that was number one number two how this conversation pretty much transitions from them talking work and not just you know enjoying their exercise is tommy then goes right into it and asks kimberly did she already know about Mappy and the green ranger now the truth is is that she never did she found out with everyone else and because of that they have an argument kimberly just thinks that tommy wants her to essentially lie just so that he can get what he wants to hear because he already doesn't trust him and i feel like that has something to do with you know that's another ex-boyfriend at the end of the day. There's a little bit of drama going, there might be a little bit of a love triangle, kind of. However, we do already know that eventually at some point throughout this story, Tommy will end up with Kat. That's just a thing, it's already happened, we've seen it happen in Soul of the Dragon. But I mean, who's to say that within all of these alternate realities, the grid being shattered and then being put all back together, even though when you put things back together, it's not always perfectly the way it was before. Who's to say that the 
relationship between Tommy and Kimberly won't just go on and continue. But I do feel like that actually won't happen because this is where my prediction comes in. I feel like at some point there will be a moment where Matt and Kimberly might actually get back together, but that's gonna be a little bit weird because as it is right now, Kim is still with Tommy. Don't know how it's gonna set up, but again, like I said, I'm sure there's gonna be some point in time where we will be introduced to Kat and Kat will play some kind of role because she will eventually take on the Pink Ranger mantle and essentially take over Kimberly's Pink Ranger throne, I guess. Speaking of setting up things interestingly for the long term, this next prediction actually has everything to do with what's actually going currently going on within our 10,000 years of bat flashback and the little bits of information that we did get to learn about Eltar and the Guardians of Eltar. So like I do mention before through the conversation that Zelia and Zordon had, we learned so much about the planet of Eltar where they come from and we learned some of the planet's customs. Zelia informs Zordon that not only is Zartus alive, but this guy is and has been the supreme guardian of Eltar for generations. That their advancement in the last 10,000 years has caused Eltarians to live for way longer than what they're used to. And last but not least, and this is the most important piece, is that Zardis himself actually sent Zelia down in the first place per his request, but that request is what my prediction is. I think that Zardis wants Zordon to come home. <gasps> Now, if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, it wouldn't make sense, and here's why. If Zordon has a reason to be brought back to Eltar for him to even go home in the first place, that would actually directly set up the events to come with the Power Rangers becoming the Power Rangers in Zeo, with eventually them becoming Power Rangers in Turbo, and obviously introducing the full roster with Power Rangers in space. Because if there is at some point a part where he has to then travel into space to obviously get right back to where he's coming from. I'm sure at some point along that course, he will, will most likely get intercepted and boom, the events of Power Rangers in Space would then occur. Meaning that they now have a, a newfound purpose in trying to find and save Zordon. What better way than to set this up with this kind of storytelling? Now, it all really depends on how that conversation goes because I do feel like, and this is also referencing back a couple issues, there is a great Altarian war going on right now. Don't know if it's going on on Eltar or if it's just a general thing that's happening, whether Eltar, Eltarians, and other guardians of Eltar are gonna show up. Oh, by the way, if you don't know what a guardian of Eltar is, they're literally the Eltar versions of Power Rangers. That, this is like basically... I guess where, you know, it's inspired from. So not exactly sure if that means that we're gonna see more El Eltarians show up on Earth. I mean, I could imagine that considering that Zelia's already there in the first place. What would happen if Zardis would show up? What would happen if Zardis was able to get Zordon out of that intergalactic hyper tube or whatever? Forget the wording, but you guys know what I'm talking about. How he's able to be put in that tube. Imagine if there's a way to bring him out of it. And the only way out is if he leaves and goes back home. I'm just saying. A lot of possibilities could come out of this, but overall, I really did think that the issue was really cool. It's really worth a read. And if you're not already reading these issues, you really gotta get on to the Power Ranger Boom Studios comic. Also, as a bonus, I do wanna point out one of my most favorite moments out of the entire issue, which of course I will show you guys right here. Is this line actually came from Zelia herself, and when it was morphin' time, she literally said, you don't need the power to protect you. I will. Now that's pretty godlike, I'm not gonna lie. Cause it kinda shows you, it, or gives you a little bit of a taste or a tease as to how much stronger the Guardians of Eltarians are possibly in comparison to the Power Rangers. Considering that Zordon's one key catchphrase is, may the power protect you. Well, she apparently is the power and I'm just saying, if we ever get some kind of Power Rangers versus Gu uh, Guardians of Eltar going on, that would be kind of OD. So that's all my thoughts, that's all my review. Like I said, I did think the issue was pretty freaking good and just makes me look forward to reading more of them. Next week will be Power Rangers 6, and that will continue what the events that have been happening out in the space side of things. Astronomers already involved, Ecliptors already involved. So make sure you guys are liking the video, subscribing, commenting down below all your thoughts and whatnot. And do look forward to next week's 
review and i hope you guys did like this format i know it's very new but i hope this does work out going forward and i i did actually like doing it like this it was very fun yes make sure you guys are taking care of yourself me the power protect keep it locked loaded right here on the channel stay safe stay clean stay inside i will see y'all next <laughs>